Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study. However, I can be a supplement to your own scripture study. My focus is to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ to testify of those things that are true. I'll be reading and expounding from the Book of Mormon, but we can get into other scriptures at a later time. So today's number is 17 verses. This will be easy, like one, two, three. Helaman Jr., chapter 15. The Lord chastened the Nephites because he loved them. Converted Lamanites are firm and steadfast in the faith. The Lord will be merciful unto the Lamanites in the latter days. Verse 1. And now, my beloved brethren, behold, I declare unto you that except ye shall repent, your houses shall be left unto you desolate. Yea, except ye repent, your women shall have great cause to mourn in the day that they shall give suck, for ye shall attempt to flee, and there shall be no place for refuge. Yea, and woe unto them which are with child, for they shall be heavy and cannot flee. Therefore they shall be trodden down and shall be left to perish. Yea, woe unto this people who are called the people of Nephi, except they shall repent. When they shall see all these signs and wonders, which shall be showed unto them, for behold, they have been a chosen people of the Lord. Yea, the people of Nephi hath he loved, and also hath he chastened them. Yea, in the days of their inequities hath he chastened them, because he loved them. But behold, my brethren, the Lamanites, hath he hated, because their deeds have been evil continually and this because of the inequity of the traditions of their fathers. But behold, salvation hath come unto them through the preaching of the Nephites, and for this intent hath the Lord prolonged their days. And I would that ye should behold that the more part of them are in the path of their duty, and they do walk circumspectly before God, and they do observe to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, according to the law of Moses. So a couple things quickly to expound on here. When they use the word woe, I mean, woe is just one of those words that I, when anytime I see that, it's like, beware, don't make the same mistake. So he's sharing all these woes onto them and some very horrible things to think about. Like he's saying the women, what he's talking about specifically, what he means in verse two, if, by them being heavy or like you could say breastfeeding as well so being pregnant all those things they won't be able to run away because obviously they're in a weakened state because they're still helping a young child to grow and develop and so that's just something i mean very unfortunate because of their wicked uh, their wickedness so what he's saying here is not that god wants to just wipe people out just to wipe them out but he's basically saying because of their inequities, their sins, the wickedness they're doing. So they won't have God's support. That's the key thing. If they wasn't doing this wickedness, God will preserve them because they don't have his preservation. You can say his support. Then these things are going to happen to them because they don't have the help. Because without God, we're nothing. That's clearly what he's teaching us here. However, he's also saying that we can repent. He's also shown us how the Nephites taught the Lamanites and the Lamanites are becoming those people again that are doing good. But the key thing here to keep in mind is that why we have prophets to warn us of these things. So all these things that the prophet Samuel is prophesying or prophets nowadays prophesy, warn us, call us to repent. These horrible things we can think of, we don't have to worry about them. If we're doing good, we're repenting. So that's basically what Samuel is saying. Repent, have goodness. Don't repent, woe be unto you. Verse 6. Yea, I say unto you that the more part of them are doing this, and they are striving with unwearied diligence, that they may bring the remainder of their brethren to the knowledge of the truth. 
Therefore, there are many who do add to their numbers daily. And behold, ye do know of yourselves, for ye have witnessed it, that as many of them as are brought to the knowledge of the truth, and to know the wicked and abominable traditions of their fathers, and are led to believe the holy scriptures, yea, the prophecies of the holy prophets, which are written, which, next page over, leadeth them to faith on the Lord and unto repentance, which faith and repentance bringeth a change of heart unto them. Therefore, as many as have come to this, ye know of yourselves, are firm and steadfast in the faith and in the thing wherewith they have been made free. And ye know also that they have buried their weapons of war, and they fear to take them up, lest by any means they should sin. Yea, you can see that they fear to sin. For behold, they will suffer themselves that they be trodden down and slain by their enemies, and will not lift up their swords against them, and this because of their faith in Christ. And now because of their steadfastness, when they do believe, in that thing which they do believe, for because of their firmness, which they are once enlightened, behold, the Lord shall bless them and prolong their days, notwithstanding their inequity. Yea, even if they should dwindle in unbelief, the Lord shall prolong their days until the time shall come, which hath been spoken of by our fathers, and also by the prophet Zenos, and many other prophets, concerning the restoration of our brethren the Lamanites, again to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, I say unto you, that in the latter times, the promises of the Lord have been extended to our brethren, the Lamanites, and notwithstanding the many afflictions which they shall have, and notwithstanding they shall be driven to and fro upon the face of the earth, and be hunted, and shall be smitten, and scattered abroad, having no place for refuge. The Lord shall be merciful unto them. And this is according to the prophecy that they shall again be brought to the true knowledge, which is the knowledge of their Redeemer and their great and true shepherd and be numbered among his sheep. Therefore, I say unto you, it shall be better for them than for you, except ye repent. For behold, had the mighty works been shown unto them, which have been shown unto you, Yea, unto them who have dwindled in unbelief because of the traditions of their fathers, ye can see for yourselves that they never would again have dwindled in unbelief. Therefore said the Lord, I will not utterly destroy them, but I will cause that in the day of my wisdom they shall return again unto me, said the Lord. Verse 17. And now behold, said the Lord, concerning the people of Nephites. If they will not repent and observe to do my will, I will utterly destroy them, said the Lord, because of their unbelief, notwithstanding the many mighty works which I have done among them. And as surely as the Lord liveth, shall these things be, said the Lord. And that concludes the chapter, and I will wrap up with my testimony. That I know God is willing to preserve us. Those of us that may be going through those periods of wickedness. I know that he's willing to have patience with us because of our desire for righteousness. I know that God does not look upon sin in any degree of allowance. However, he is willing to be merciful to those that are striving. That are trying to do better daily. I know repentance is real. And because of that, because of the Savior's atonement, which also is real, which makes repentance possible, that we can do that on a daily basis. We can be forgiven of sins. We can draw ourselves back to him, back to our Father in heaven. And we can have the guilt, the guilt we feel when we do things wrong, wiped away because of the Savior's grace and the love that he has for us. I leave y'all with my testimony in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen.